Hello, welcome back to the studio. I know if you click this thumbnail, you know what we're doing today and I hope you're really, really excited. For those of you who are new here, I'm Leah, I'm a collage artist and Rosie is as well. We are going to be doing a collab that is very exciting. Today I'm off to the thrift store to find some things for her to use for her collages and she's going as well to find something for me. Then we're going to be sending them to each other and creating something really cool with them. As you know, I love up cycles. I've done clocks and now this big one here and a couple other things. And it's something that always has brought me joy. So I'm really excited to see what she's gotten for me. And I know what I got for her and I'm super excited to see what she makes. So if you want to, after this video, go check out hers as well. And if you don't know who Rosie is, she's an amazing collage artist here on YouTube. We're two of the same kind and I feel like a lot of people don't have similar channels to ours, but we do have similar feeling in our artworks. It's a blessing for you if you haven't heard of her because now you can go check out all of her videos and binge watch them today. And I'll just plug it here that if you haven't seen our other collabs, you're in for a treat. We did a paper swap collab, so that's two videos you can watch, and we also did a live together that you can watch, so, and her new video, so you technically have five videos of us together now. Let's go on a little adventure. So let's go open this box. I'm super excited. I'm a little nervous to open the box. What's gonna be inside? But let's take a look. Ah, moment of truth. Oh. Oh my gosh, the print. And look, she wrote me a little note to go with the art print. Leah, I am so excited to be collaborating again. I found some fun and interesting goodies that I know you can turn into something fabulous. Have an incredible and creative September. So excited to see the things you create. Love, Rosie. This looks like an eight by 10, so I'm definitely gonna try to find a frame for this and try to put it in the office somewhere. Okay, let's get into what's in here. <laughs> what in the world? We're staying together for the sake of the cat. Oh my goodness. If you watched my recent live stream, I made something with a bunch of cats, so maybe we have a couple more that we can work with for this. If you've been with me for a very, very long time, I actually did flat ornaments and I was selling them at art fairs for a while and they took so long to make that I was like, there's no profit in this, but I loved doing it. So this is kind of a fun idea. I think the glass might have broken that, but that's okay. We can take out the glass and just do it without. I definitely love the idea of this. I think we could make like six little collages. We could even paint this or just collage the outside, right? We don't have to stick to the guidelines of what this is meant to do. Um, or we could turn it into something else. So I think there's a lot to do with this. Okay, let's do the last thing. Potentially last thing. I think it's the last thing. Okay. This one I can definitely see doing like a decoupage, like something on the inside. And it's really funny on our call, we kind of talked about different things that we both wanted to do for different projects. And she was like, I have to urge myself to not get you another clock. And I said, I wanted to really try doing like a decoupage uh, vase at some point because I saw some really cool tutorials. This one's the one that's actually capturing me fully and I have some really cool ideas for this. So I might go with this one for at least the thing we start with. 
So I just went and washed this, so now it's all clean. Uh, you can see that there's like lines on the side, there's a couple bubbles, so it's not like a perfect vase. So that's why I think this is gonna be like a perfect first DIY for uh, decoupage. I know it's gonna be a little bit challenging just because it goes in and then back out. So like cutting in something to go inside is gonna be a little bit interesting, but I don't really, I don't know, I haven't done this before. So everything's gonna be a challenge. I just came across this photo on like one of the top of my piles and I thought that it might be perfect like having something like this along the bottom uh, just to kind of frame it and then having something else going on or even having just like this literally like along the bottom or I could do something with like fruit along the bottom could be kind of fun. I was debating if I should go with the more like surrealist feel or if we should go full abstract with this. I think that I'm leaning towards doing something more surreal. In terms of what would fit, I think that like something of this size is like the absolute max, but let's just try that. Yeah, see, so I think like this would even have to go down, but it's cool to be able to see like what it would look like. A makeup one could be really cool. When brainstorming for something like this, I try to think about like what the actual thing is and what concepts would be really interesting with it. So for example, what does a vase do? I know it sounds very simple, but what does it do? And that usually is hold flowers, dried flowers, um, pens and pencils maybe, it's a place for storage, or what could a vase represent. And that's why like, it's funny that I want to do flowers and florals uh, because flowers are going in them. So I think that that's where my brain is going. What else uh, goes, goes inside of this is if you see the flowers, we could do like the roots and the ground underneath it. This is like making me think lightning bolts would be like really cool because it's like they look like roots when there's a flower in it, but then it's like a connection to like the earth. Because I'm really not sure what I want to do, I'm going to head to this. So this is a McCall's 1970s. So this is like a Canadian beauty magazine. Um, I have a huge pile of them right now, as you can see. So I just wanted to go through them and see if like anything sparked my inspiration. Just gonna stop here how funny this is Barbara Streisand on one side and then like our current Prime Minister of Canada like right here as a child is kind of hilarious that the two are on the same page also this is really funny just the idea of like redecorate your husband so out of everything we saw this is the image that just really intrigued me I think that it's like you know, beauty standards and like it's uh, different and reimagined, right? Like we have this real piece. I just don't know how it would work. I also pulled like these people. I thought they were kind of interesting and it's about like computer love, which is kind of hilarious. Uh, I feel like that's so much more common these days, like an AI. Um, and then this one also had the teeth with it. So I just thought that those all kind of went together well. We also need to keep in mind the color of the mica powder. So this one is like almost a little brownie, right? Like uh, antique brownie. So I wanna make sure that like the images go with that in this as a background. I think this one will go really nicely and any of these honestly would. Um, but they are like, if we're using hands, like they are like a very similar tone. So we need to bring in like some brighter colors. So I like the way this is looking for sure. Like it's really cool. It looks like it's almost holding something. It almost looks real, right? Like it feels 3D when you when you look at it like this. Um, oh, my one worry though is that look, it's like almost fully covering only one side of it. So then it's like what would be on this side? We could find another hand and maybe intertwine them. This has got to be one of the most poorly aged magazine ads. Oh my goodness. Things don't happen the way they used to, but they still happen. Oh my goodness. I have a ton of 80s magazines. I have an entire box of them, like a huge box of them right now. I really don't like the 80s. I feel like it's a curse time. I don't know, there's like a lot of like, I don't know, everything feels like scary for some reason to me. I'm not sure why, but um, so I'm gonna look through these. Okay, we're back. It's been a little bit, um, but I still only basically have this. This is the one hand we had. 
I looked through thousands of pages, uh, many, many magazines, and this is like the only other hand that was kind of like that. So I think I need to give up on that idea. And I think I was thinking about like, what could I do with a hand? What have I done in with a hand? I could like work it into my work somehow. And I thought about a piece that I did last year, which was the bird on a hand. I don't think I actually have a name for the, that piece yet. Um, I'm hoping to make an art print soon, but I thought that it would be good to start by looking through this ABCs of nature. Um, and it just like, it was on my desk. So I opened it and I was like, okay, they have some little birds. Like, could I have a bird landing on the hand and then having like a whole bunch of like a flock or something like wrapping around the vase and maybe there's something else. Maybe there's like, I don't know, like uh, something to do with like, I guess, nature in the sense or um, maybe not even. Maybe it's a commentary on the fact that there are nowhere for the birds to go, something like that. Well, let's, uh, let's take a look what's inside. Okay, once I saw this octopus, my mind is kind of thing to the a same idea, but kind of different. What if we did like under the sea uh, hand instead of bird hand? We got under the sea hand of some sort. I think this one is super cool. I wish it wasn't black and white exactly, but we can say that it's just like a gray one. Um, even the shell is kind of cool. And then these are all really nice, like having a little piece of coral to tuck her into, having some shells around it. Even this crab hanging off the side could be really cool for this. Um, even if it's at, like the top of the jar, for example. Um, and obviously like maybe this. So I'm gonna cut these out and then keep going. Just with this collection alone, I'm kind of leaning towards the under the sea version. I think it'd be really nice. And I even think that this color would be really nice for like under the sea. It's kind of like muddy, but it has, still has this like nice shine to it. I think like it would match like all of these images really, really nicely. So why don't we just start cutting out everything and see what happens? most complicated piece possible for this but I'm really going into all the nooks and crannies for this one because if it's on a darker background so it'll be that dark gold color that means that you're gonna see every little tiny white speck so um, I'm definitely gonna need smaller scissors I always forget to grab them uh, but this is definitely going to take a very long time so I have to get in some little details so I'm just switching out the blade here and adding a fresh one Oh hi friends, were you aware that I have a shop where I sell my art prints? It's called flanzella.com. It's linked in the description if you want to go check it out. I'd really love it if you did and all the support is really really helpful for my career. I really appreciate it and let's get back to the video. Now that we have a couple things cut out, I just really want to try this and see if it's going to work. So we got our hand. I think it could be like intertwined, but I think it needs to be like a little bit farther out, like something like this. 
I'm definitely gonna have to like glue these together before they go in, but let's just say like that, because I feel like this would wrap mostly around the vase. It's kind of fun. And look, this leg goes almost all the way over. And this would be like all the way to there. So it does make like a perfect circle. This is definitely like a really big challenge because I don't really know how to like plan it out well enough. Like if this is here and this wraps around, like where, where does this guy go? And he has like a claw. Like where would that go? Like, is he gonna be popping out the top like this? And then like trying to grab something or yeah, I don't know. Let's let's figure that next step out. In general too, I think that this might be like one of the hardest projects I end up doing because this vase was kind of bought um, by someone else and you know, like they didn't really know my intentions with it. And when I look at that vase, I'm like, it is so thin. Like a lot, a lot of people would think like a smaller one is easier, but you know, I can barely fit my hand into it. So I think it's gonna be one of those things where I'm like actually trying to figure out like how to get things in, how to paste it and make it look like really clean. So this is definitely, yeah, it's a, it's a challenging project. I think seeing these colors together are perfect. It almost looks like she's wearing like a gown and this is the sleeve of it. So I left this part on where the dock was, but we got rid of it. So that's kind of cool, I like it. I think too, this would go really well in this part. So I'm going to cut like along here, I think, and just tuck this in behind and in front kind of like, so it's like a part of it. Um, and that'll give me like a bottom line at least. So I'm definitely loving that. I'm just gonna kind of play this out like how I think it will go around. I kind of want the crab's finger to like go around this one. I don't know if that'll happen. Maybe this one. And then maybe like this around the corner has like this and maybe just like a little school of fish or something. As I said, I do have this one too. It has pearls in it, so it kind of goes with the theme or I was thinking it could be like, this could be in the hand of it. I'm gonna cut these pearls off and I think just like put them over top of the starfish. I'm loving this, I think it's super cool. Looks like a shell almost. So Fang has come to terrorize us, but we're gonna do our best to work around her. Um, I think that these fish are too blue for the composition. They're like gray versus like a deep tone. And whales are too big, I would say. This would be cool to use in something though, like a big group of them. I mean, this has some pretty good ones. Like I could definitely see myself putting like the lobster on like the hand. This would be perfect if I could cut out every single one of these and they would look good, but I know that that would just not happen. So these might be cool for the bottom is to put a couple shells. It's a really beautiful illustration. In terms of how I would use it though, I'm not sure. There's a little bit of coral here if I wanted to get more of that red coral. And I really like this jellyfish. It's going to be really hard to cut out again, but I think that it has like the right tones. If we look a little closer, you can see they even have these little tiny fish in there. Uh, this is a man of war, it says, the Portuguese man of war. So I think that that would kind of work into this. I did see this little seahorse too, so I might pull this just because I think it would be a nice little addition. Since you probably just don't want to see me cut anymore, I figured till the end of this, I'm going to try to just spit some facts about seahorses because I think that they're basically aliens. They are crazy cool animals. Uh, the first fun fact that I'm going to say is that the Latin word for seahorse is hippocampus. You can look it up on Google. And what is hippocampus? It's a part of the brain. If you look it up of what it is in, I guess, English of the Latin version, I guess. And that's the where you store your long-term memory. So I don't know why that they combined a seahorse with the hippocampus and what it was called. I don't know, there's gotta be some weird connection between that because that always weirded me out. The next and most obvious is obviously that the man is the one that's like pregnant with the eggs and it's kind of crazy because I think it's like literally the only animal 
that does that, which is just like crazy. I don't know why that would happen. That's why I think it's an alien of some sort or some sort of very ancient animal. The next fun fact is maybe just not a fact, but something you haven't thought of, but seahorses are like terrible swimmers. It's like, do they actually belong in the water or did they just end up there? And they're like, yeah, this is fine. I'll figure it out. And just kind of went from there. I don't, I don't, I don't understand that. It makes no sense to me because basically they just cling on and hope for dear life. And the last fact that I'm just spitting off here and I'm going to do my scalpel is that they actually like long-term relationships, which is so sweet. But then it's like, if you're getting swept away by the ocean, how do you, how do you find your lover? That would just be like terribly stressful all the time. That was actually pretty good. Look how crazy that is. I almost finished the whole thing with big, big scissors. Okay, the next one is the Portuguese man of war. And I don't actually have any fun facts about jellyfish. If you have any jellyfish facts, uh, write them below, I guess. That would be kind of fun. Or if you have any sea or animal ocean facts in general, I'm sure you have one you're dying to say. When I'm doing smaller pieces like this, I try to leave the a section here and then pull down because this is like very likely to rip, but because it's a fresh blade, it should be okay. But I highly recommend like leaving as much as you can. This one I should have done with scissors. Um, or something like this, like you should leave a big section here and then like pull back on it. Um, do as I say, not as I do, I guess, in this situation, because see, this is so fragile. I could rip like the whole thing off if I'm not careful. So I started setting up, but the one thing I have to do before we start is actually scan these. I'm not sure what's gonna happen with it being a magazine paper um, for some of them. And these ones have like some text on the back. These ones are a little thicker, so I think this will be better. But for the hands, I'm just worried that there might be like some text coming through. So I'm gonna make sure to scan these in case I need to redo it. Everything looks good, so I'm going to save this and we can continue. I'm gonna do a quick cleanup, but I just wanted to give this tip, is anytime I pull anything out and I don't use it and it's from this book, I just tuck it right back in and that way when I'm looking for more bird pictures, I can quickly just look through those first. Okay, so let's talk about everything we need. So obviously the vase, then we're gonna take matte medium. So this is my favorite use, it's a gloss, it's good for acrylic, uh, it's water-based versus oil-based. This is Golden, it's one of the best brands. I think it's like the best brand uh, for sure. Um, highly recommend trying this one. So this is what I'm gonna use to put it inside. This is what I use for photo transfers and a whole bunch of other things. Then I don't have a plastic plate, so I'm gonna just cover one of a plate that I have with uh, saran wrap. So I've done three layers of that. And I'm just gonna put the matte medium on top of this. Then I just have some papers, so that way I keep all the pieces clean. And then of course we have this. This is not what we're going to use today, but it will be something that we use later on. And the last thing is just like a little crappy brush. This one broke in half, so I've just been using it as my matte medium brush. It's soft, but it's big enough, like the pieces aren't huge, so I think that it'll be perfect for this. I've watched other videos that do things like this, and they say to put the pieces in with like a little piece of sticky tack or something. I'm not gonna risk that just because I know vintage magazines and they will not stand up to anything like that. That's just not gonna work. Even like fingerprints, for example, like I've washed my hands very thoroughly before doing this. So I have like as little oil as possible on my fingers. Then I have a super lightly wetted uh, cloth. This is going to be to take the glue off of. And I also have some just paper towel that's dry so that if I need to like wipe something up that, with a dry material, uh, that I'll have this. Okay, I guess uh, let's just get into it. And with these ones, I'm actually gonna put glue on the front and the back, and it's just gonna be a very, very thin layer.
I think I'm gonna add a little bit more water just cause the glue is looking a little bit too white and we definitely want it to be like clear on here. Okay, so now we have to do like the biggest piece basically just to start it off so we can figure out everything else. So I think the hand needs to be at kind of a big angle. And that means that let's just picture it being like almost sideways. Like maybe it's better to picture it from here, but the hand would be coming out from here. And then where would the octopus sit, right? Like I really liked it having this tentacle wrapped around the finger. This took me like way too long to get into position, but I think it's good now. I cut this tiny piece that was in front to go behind so that that looks more of like the correct perspective. I think this was perfect because you can see all the intricate cutting and I didn't want that to get left out. Don't know if I put enough glue on. We're gonna have to retry this. I think because the last one I put a little bit too much glue, I was kind of afraid to put glue on this time. So I feel like professionals would not even try doing that in this phase, but we are dealt the cards we have been given. I hope that you guys can see this enough because I feel like I really can't, so I can't imagine this being super visually helpful. <laughs> definitely getting better. It's been such a struggle. These two fingers, every time I move anything else, they come up and move over. And this one even broke off, so I had to put it back in place. The issue is, is that I didn't do the right angle, which I was unsurprised at all about. But I think if I put like one more piece of coral in front of it, that it'll actually kind of work. I've never used, um, like tweezers for collage, but this is definitely like an instance where I could see myself needing them. I don't know if you guys use them. I feel like I'm getting the glue off way better with a smaller cloth. And then I also went in with like the paintbrush and I was just like going like this. And I think that was like getting a lot of it to come out. My next non-pro tip is that this takes so much patience. I think like if you're not a patient person, I don't know how you could do decoupage. I feel like this one's gonna be so much easier. Worry-free. Okay, now we need to make some tough decisions. So we have the crab and the jellyfish and I can obviously see the jellyfish just going perfectly in there. It would fill the space. It would make me really sad if, to not have the crab though. So, I mean, this just kind of got out of hand the way it was supposed to be versus the way it was. The other option is like the crab could be kind of like behind the hand maybe. So this would have to move like kind of here and like dangle. So as I said, a lot of people do like sticky putty for this or whatever, so. There are ways to plan it out better than I have done. You could go like there. I don't really mind that. So I'm gonna start with this one and go from there. Pulled this back and it's already come back to haunt me. See, look how good that looks. It's pretty nice. Okay, so I've also made a little bit of a crazy decision and that is to cut off the claw so that I can angle it once it's in there. So I think this is where I want the crab. I think he's kind of cute, just tucked in there. Maybe it's the paper that's easier, but yeah, everything just feels so easy now. I feel like I've gotten a hang of it. I think I could make it so that it does grab it. I think that's pretty funny. Just like a little kiss. Now that we basically have everything on here, I'm really liking it and I know it's kind of hard to see because we don't have the background yet, but I think that this is the only area that really is lacking. We have this cute little kiss now, 
But I do think that like now that we have this and this, I think that it just like makes sense to add a little bit more coral. So I'm gonna find one more piece for that. Okay, so I think this will fit perfectly. Like her finger is there. I was wondering if like I could put like a ring in here. I'm trying to think of like what the meaning of this piece is right now. Quickly scanned. Learned my lesson here. I'm cutting this and I'm gonna make sure that I can like place it just a little bit awkwardly if I need to because this is on a, a surface that is not flat. So while I was doing that, there's definitely bigger holes than I expected and even having this one. And I was gonna find something to fill it and I was looking for something brown and then I realized that like the mica powder is actually like the perfect color for that. So I think I'm just gonna leave it as is even with these little holes, they'll all get covered up with this in the next step. Good morning guys, we're back in the studio. I just wanna take a quick look at how it dried last night because I was really questioning myself of what it would look like today. But I'm so happy with the results. I think this is really cool. And everything just looks like the way I wanted it to be. I was really worried about the glue and everything and it's just like funny because I guess I didn't have to. So I have had some thought of what brush would be better and I've actually just decided to keep going with this one. I think it's big enough that you could make like fun shapes and it's not that you want waves, it's just like I want like flow, like showing like there's water movement for sure and I want it to be like thick. So this is gonna be perfect for that and then I'll have to like quickly do the mica powder. So I wanted to check what was inside of here just before starting and I am dyslexic and I read this wrong. It says high covering power, not powder. I thought this was a powder. So I opened it up and it's actually like a paint. So do I have to paint this on? It's really pretty though. I love the color. I think it's gonna be perfect inside, but I'm just gonna do a quick Google on what this is even is. <laughs> so I just did some research on this and it's closer to actually something like an acrylic or an oil paint. Um, so that's interesting. I guess like my plan overall was to varnish the inside afterwards. So that'll still work for this. It's just like a thicker paint and it has a higher pigment level and it seems more durable than the other ones. So this might actually be like in my favor. a lot of risks with this project and it kind of sucks because I really like the design. I think it's super cool. So I'm really hoping that this glue dries the way I want it to. And what I was kind of doing in the inside, I couldn't really show that, but I was just taking a paintbrush and really making sure that every single edge is like really covered and pushed down and that like no paint will like get around the edges even. So it's hopefully like fully sealed. It looks like the hand is actually not pressed up against the glass and I couldn't really feel it when I was putting it in. See that really nice glossy color? This is what the inside looks like right now. You can see that we're definitely gonna have to do some more layers. On the outside, it's looking pretty good. I am kind of regretting putting the glue though. You can see it, even though it was dry, it doesn't look dry. Maybe that'll go in away in a day or so. Given what it looks like right now, I'm definitely gonna do like two to three more coats of paint. like wondering why the glue was coming up again like it was going away and it was basically gone and now it's up again and I realized that's because maybe it wasn't fully fully dry and when I added the uh, paint to it it's a liquid too right and water-based so I think that it's actually just because it's getting wet again 
how are you? Hey, I'm doing great. I'm so excited for this. I'm very excited to see what you made, show you what I made. This was a really fun, really fun challenge. I'm so glad we did this. Yeah, I don't know how you feel, but I feel like this is one of the most challenging things I've probably ever done <laughs> for, for art because it's like making things 3D in some way, right? And, and that sort of thing. Um, and like taking a new object and making it something completely yep. different. So yeah, I think this is amazing. I'm so excited to see what you did as well. Okay. Oh, I love that. All right, do you wanna jump into it? I'm ready yeah, to share. I'm ready to jump into it. Okay, um, I'll okay. look at yours first. So cool, congrats. That must've been such a big challenge. <laughs> yeah, it was really fun, really, really fun. All right, I am excited to see what you made. Oh my goodness, wait. Oh my God, this is so cool, this underwater scene. Yeah. Okay, wait, is the background paint though? Yes, it's a like a vinyl paint. Oh, whoa, that's cool. Yeah, so basically what I did was <laughs> this vase I got, right, from you and um, I, all the other ones were like really cool. I loved looking at the other things and I was just like, I just don't know what to do with them. They're so cool though. Um, but I know that we were talking on the call about doing a vase and then I saw mm -hmm. this and I was like, oh my gosh, okay, well, I'll try that. Um, but what I didn't realize is it, having the concave made it like super <laughs> difficult to glue everything. So it took me so many hours, like I think it was like three or four hours just gluing these inside because it was like they were ripping and the fingers falling off and it was just like a complete disaster. Um, and then I used um, just like a normal glue and I thought that the glue was like drying like white at first and I was like freaking out. I was like, oh no, I ruined it all. But over the last couple of days, it's completely gone away and it has just like a nice kind of like texture to it now. Um, that kind of looks like like swoopy sea, I guess, water um, and yeah. that sort of thing. Um, and yeah, I just thought that like the under the sea, I was kind of drawing inspiration from, I have some pieces where like I have like hands and birds on them. And I was thinking about doing that. And then I saw this octopus and I was like, that is a super cool piece. And this is from the ABCs of nature. I know, I think we both have that one. Yeah. Um, and I saw it and I was just like, that's the one. Like, it's just so cool. And I had this hand and- um, The tentacles and the hand intertwined is so cool. Isn't like, it? That is so cool. I love that part. <laughs> yeah, this is like literally what started. I was like, it kind of reminds me of that, like the touch of Venus piece or whatever it's called. I'm blanking right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I just was able to find like all these other ones. And I put it like another hand that kind of looks like a claw shell um, yeah. and stuff. So it was just kind of like a fun piece. And yeah, I'm really excited. I'm, I'm really happy with the results. Like I was yeah. I'm like, this is not gonna go well. And I was like, yeah. at one point I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to finish like correctly and like it be something I'm proud of. Um, and then yeah, yeah, it just all came together at the last moment. And I was like, thank gosh. <laughs> That's awesome. So I knew I was giving you a couple of challenging things because I gave you some round, I think like some round ornaments, the round yes. base. Like I was kind of like, these are a little bit hard, but I kind of thought that you could handle it. Well, I wanted to, you know, we had talked about the vase, so I thought that was a really cool um, option for you. And so I'm, yeah, I'm really glad. I feel like we both pushed ourselves to do something that maybe we wouldn't have done um, had we picked objects for ourselves. Absolutely. Um, and I think we both made really cool pieces. Like that's incredible. Yeah, I feel like this was a great challenge. And I, I liked the idea of like someone else picking it for you too. It's just like, you know, you could go to the thrift store right now and pick something for yourself, but it's like when you're given something and you have to create with it, I feel like it almost puts this like urgency on it or like, you know, you're like under pressure a little bit more. Yeah. Um, so I was really like proud of both of us for like working under like those, those circumstances, I think is really cool. <laughs> so are you less scared of round objects now? Do you think you'd do something I, like this in the future? Def definitely. I think like even like the 3D-ness is something that's like um, a little bit challenging too. Like I was trying to plan this out and it's a circle, right? And I was like trying to put it on the desk and I was like, my brain was just like, okay, what would this actually look like? Like where do these things actually need to go and, and all that? So right. I think that was kind of like a really interesting part of it as well. That's so cool, man. I want to now. I want to try doing a round thing. It sounds really hard, but <laughs> if possible. I were to do it like an easier one, just get like like solid walls, like straight walls, I guess, because right. then you could like push it in. Yeah, definitely a huge challenge for sure. 
<laughs> yeah, but you really crushed it. It's so cool. Oh, thank so you. So cool. You and you can't well. even tell from the pictures, you can't tell it looks like you cried, like you totally didn't have any issues gluing it all down. Yeah. Um, the great job. I really love it. <laughs> the beauty of YouTube, you're showing the full process behind it. It's like you could see this on a store and be like, cool. <laughs> and then yeah. it's like, you didn't see the blood, sweat, and tears that went in behind the scenes. Yeah. Yeah, and I love that you did the paint in the background to kind of keep it a little bit more simple. So there's less going on in the background. It was kind of more like oceany. Um, so I think that was a really good solution for that. Yeah, thank you. I, d I did like a bunch of like research too as well and like looked at what other people were doing, did some Pinterest searching and I was like, nice. okay, paint might be the right answer for this. Um, I haven't done it yet, but like the inside is like all gold right now, but I would love to like either spray paint it or like do a varnish inside or something so I can actually use it like as a proper vase would be really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or dried flowers, I guess, is an option, but amazing. Wow. We did such a great job. And so I'm so happy and so thrilled with all how this turned out. And thanks again for doing another collab with me. It's always so fun. Yeah, I, this is amazing. It's always so fun to do it. And, you know, it's always a nice challenge. We get to do something different and I still have the other pieces. So I was like, maybe I'll throw those in in the, in the future videos. Yeah, just thank you for, uh, to, you know, doing this and suggesting it. And so glad like everything turned out so well. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Oh, this is so exciting. Thanks again. Yeah, thank you. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Did we end it with a bye? Was that good? <laughs>